Well, we're in the wildflower meadow of Teresa and Olin Thomas in Stillwater, Oklahoma, just in their backyard. And they happen to be some of our volunteer ambassadors, and they're really interested in ornamental grasses and wildflowers. And I, the one I want to show you that's really kind of past its peak here in their backyard is one referred to as the Indian paintbrush. And it happens to be the one that's kind of the pinkish fuchsia color that you see scattered throughout the wildflower meadow here. And actually, the Indian paintbrush is a native of Oklahoma, and it's quite in interesting some of the uniquenesses about it. First of all, when you drive by the roadsides throughout the state, you'll see it just pretty much covered in some areas of the state. And a lot of people now have finally figured out how to introduce it into their yards and landscapes. But again, it's pretty well distributed. I think the thing that most people don't realize, though, when you look at the plant, the brightest part of the color is actually a brack, or very similar to poinsettia. It's a leaf that is starting to color up, and that's what we're seeing right here. The flower would be on the inside there, and it's not quite as bright. It's kind of a, oh, an off pink, a little bit green-yellow color, and obviously you can see it's tubular shaped, and the hummingbirds just love it as well. So really the most brilliant part of the flower or the plant that we're seeing is a leaf and not the actual flower. So it's kind of unique and I don't think a lot of people stop and look at it long enough to even notice that. But the genus and species of the one that's most commonly found in Oklahoma would be Castilea indivisa. And it actually prefers sandier soils, but again, pretty much located throughout the state. You'll also see these in Texas, Kansas, and Missouri, but it's interesting some of the different species. In Texas, they call theirs the prairie paintbrush, and it will come in a purple color, a yellow color, a white color, and you'll even see a different species up in Kansas and Missouri. But the point is that there's all kinds of species and a lot of different variations, and they can get anywhere from, say, 8 to 32 inches in height, depending on the species. Also, you'll find the bloom time anywhere from, say, April to July, again, depending on where you find the plants located in the state. Now, I think it's one of those things, though, that people see it, they drive by, and they want to start some in their yard. And a lot of people will collect the seeds and try to start them. And let me give you some pointers, because what they're finding out in the nursery industry is they're very difficult to start from seed. And we found that out as well. Earlier this spring, you'll see that we ordered some seed from the Northwest Native Seed Company, and we ordered eight different Castileo and eight different species. And out of the eight, we only had success with one, and this happens to be Castileo latifolia. And this is all we got from that one particular one. And again, we're, if we'd have studied up on a little bit more, and, and uh, we might have had a little better success, but what they're telling us is that this particular plant, the Indian paintbrush, is somewhat parasitic. So that means the root system, and again, it's not a very big root system, can actually grow out and penetrate other plants and feed off of them. And so some nurseries now are even selling them, growing in, say, like with fescue or different plants, so they can feed off of those plants as they start. And that way you'll see some differences in the success of starting them. Another nurseryman also put in the literature that he found at this stage that if you'll give them quite a bit of water-soluble nitrogen early on, on regular basis, that also helps out. But he definitely said you don't want to transplant them until they get, say, three to four or five true leaves on them. And these are just about the right size to transplant. Now, again, we started them from seed, and, and we would transplant them out into the garden in more of a cultured setting. But at the same time, once you get seeds going, you can just uh, let them pretty much reproduce on their own. And now you can see these back in here are turning brown and drying up, and that's about the time that you can come in and harvest some of the seed. Now some of these have already opened and split, and I'm going to peel one off and break some of the seeds open in my hand. You can see they're very small. They'd be easy to spread with the wind. And that's why if you start them from seed and collect them and you want to plant them, you would do it late summer in the fall. Obviously, you have to identify the seedlings so you'll know what to look for next spring when they're coming up. You don't want to mow them down. And especially now, you need to let them dry so the seed will scatter and they'll reseed on you. So if you're going to collect them from the wild, so to speak, make sure you get permission from the homeowners. Make sure they dry up. 
try to collect them and, and always leave a few that can remain in that particular area. But again, it's one you might want to try and keep those things in mind. Nitrogen may be parasitic and there's all kinds of wildflower companies that are selling the seed as well.